is it coming back? Because it went away with the sort of corporate media zombie network we had where people are just being fed bullshit that's not relevant to their lives. Now we're seeing the response to that, which is super intimate podcasts and YouTube videos that can go on for as long as they need to and newsletters and Twitter. So we're starting to get real communication again. And I think part of that process is looking back at what we were fed before and being able to point out that it is propaganda. It might not be the same kind of propaganda as Soviet era stuff, where a state is directly issuing it. But would you agree with me that we see a lot of actual propaganda on TV? I think we see nothing but propaganda on TV, and this is across all the networks. Uh, you're right. I mean, the, the, the time slice that you have jammed in between these commercial breaks means that you cannot introduce anything novel to the audience. Because novelty requires explanation, it requires context, it requires history. I mean, if you get, I like Ann Coulter a lot. I mean, she's a great uh, researcher and a great writer and an entertaining person, but she's not going to challenge the Fox audience, right? Uh, she she goes on some other shows, and when I see her on, I watch her on the View. She didn't really challenge anyone. So, I mean, I do six hours of call-in shows every week, and I'll have conversations with someone for two hours straight, no breaks. When we're talking about a new idea, I need to get their perspective, we need to talk about the history, we need to run through the arguments, we need to make sure it matches with the evidence. Philosophy, or, or the true extension of knowledge, is a very challenging and deep thing to do. It ain't going to fit between a commercial for a tampon and some oatmeal. It's just not with things scrolling along the bottom. You know, there's no bit in the Socratic dialogues where it's like, we now pause for a message from Cicero. <laughs> Right? I mean, this didn't... Okay, that's the wrong culture. But you know what I'm saying. Like, that You have to have in-depth, lengthy conversations to really teach someone something new or to learn something new. And so these time slices, it's just like, hey, what do you believe? We'll help you turn it up. Good, now you feel like more certain, right? And, it's, and then you get addicted to it because when you get addicted to a narrative rather than exploring reason and truth and reality, when you get addicted to a narrative, you're never satisfied because reality keeps blowing bullshit over. So you have to keep going back to prop it up. Oh, I gotta go back to Fox because, you know, or I gotta go back to MSNBC. I gotta go back and watch some Obama speeches because my bullshit is falling over. You get propping it up all the time. You don't build your house on sand when you build it on amplified opinions. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's very easy to see the propaganda that comes out of MSNBC. But then when I switch over to Fox, uh, it's a little bit harder to see, but it's still there. And what it is there is that uh, I would normally identify more with conservatives, but with these TV conservatives, they hang on to these values that are, I think, really uh, extremely evil values. You know, the drug war, for some reason, has become co-opted by conservatives, and they think they're being, uh, you know, good Americans by wanting to put other Americans in cages for smoking a plant that the colonists smoked and didn't even think about writing down and talking about because it was such a, you know, simple part of life. And so to me, I'm like, if you're limited government, then why do you believe in putting people in prisons for crimes where there's no victim, for these victimless crimes of smoking, something the state tells you not to smoke? And they don't have a good answer to that. And so that, to me, is propaganda as well. And the whole thing needs to die out. I think that that's already happening. And I think Bitcoin is just the financial extension of what we're seeing in media and what we're seeing in politics and discourse and everything else which is that people want something that's actually accurate and that is instantly disseminated. And that's all we want and need. And once we come across something that does that, we're like, you know what, I'm good. I'm good with my Twitter account. I don't need to read CNN anymore. And uh, I really think that that technology is gonna have an insanely bright future and it'll probably seep into everything else. We'll probably have secure voting systems within the next 10 years based on cryptography and it's going to be something that you just can't hack because you can't. In the same way that Bitcoin, you can't create a fake Bitcoin because you can't do it, you know? And uh, the number of possible Bitcoin addresses is more than the number of atoms in the galaxy. When you're talking about this kind of complexity, how can people even, for a single second, say that the Federal Reserve is better, which is running on the, the Janet Yellen algorithm, you know? Like, you're putting the, really, the, the fate of the whole world in one person's mind, it doesn't make any sense. It's completely ridiculous. And I think well, we're no, starting... no, hang on. But, but David, it makes a huge amount of sense to Janice Yellen. Right? <laughs> I mean, the, the concentration of power into a four-pound uh, massive brain tissue, 
uh, it, it's very heady. It, I mean, we are actually drawn to political power biochemically. We get a high out of the exercise of, of coercive power over, over, over other human beings because mm. human beings are a great resource to own. And so for Janet Yellen and for her power-addicted um, endocrinological system, it's gr it makes great sense to her. You know, like, it's just that hunting gazelle doesn't make sense to the gazelle, but for the lion, it's fantastic. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have anything against Janet Yellen. I think I'd be saying the same thing if it was uh, David Seaman. You know, like, nobody should have that level of power. And if I were to go out on the sidewalk and say that I should issue and control your currency, if I were to just say this to a bunch of strangers, they would be like, this is a crazy person. Who the fuck are you? You're going to control my currency? But suddenly you get somebody in that position of power. They're selected by the right people. And there you are. They actually have that authority. That to me is very strange, especially now that we have something better. And, and uh, I think I, I keep talking about Bitcoin in particular because it seems like one of those black swan events where we really, if we all pitch into this, if we all make it happen, if we all buy a little bit of Bitcoin or accept it at our business, make it a, a real thing at our storefront, um, we could really change the course of history in terms of starving governments of the ability to, as you said, initiate war and I think implement expensive surveillance programs that would not be possible under the free market because there's no built-in consumer demand for a huge spy grid. It's just not there. There's no real consumer demand for uh, militarized drones. That would go away. And um, I think we could actually make the jump. We, but this is kind of a, a one-time shot. I think if we allow this to fail, if we allow the media to spew lies about it, we allow bankers at Chase to scare their customers into not trying it out, not using it, what will happen is that we're stuck with this system for God knows how long, this zombie bank system could be with us for the next 50 years and it's going to drive my generation deep into debt. We're already there. It's going to keep your generation from having the kinds of retirements that you were looking forward to and it's not going to it's not going to improve anybody's well-being except for this uh, artificial class of banking executives and lobbyists in DC that has really emerged only fairly recently in our history and so that's why I'm optimistic that if we uh, just raise awareness and do the right things, support the right kinds of uh, financial instruments, it can all go away because it's unnatural to begin with. It's like a cancer and if you take away the source of nutrients for the cancer, maybe that will dry up and die itself, you know? Yeah, there's six words. Six words for human liberation and six words for the end of our experiment in democracide or the slow suicide of culture through political corruption. Six words. You can't buy votes with Bitcoin.